What is up, guys? We are live here with round two of six. And we have a pretty good treat. We have Kamal Crooks playing Sky Striker Gokis versus Ray Perez playing another Sky Striker Gokis, I believe, playing the same list. These are two local players that have uh, quite the experience. They have a lot of experience. And they've been playtesting a lot. Ray Perez actually coming off a second place finish at the Jacksonville Regional, I believe. It's either Jacksonville or Tallahassee, one of those two. But he just came back from regionals not too long ago. Kamal missed top eight, unfortunately. But Ray getting there with Pendulums, it was old format. But we're going to see Kamal here play a brand new version of Sky Strikers that we've seen so far. Gokis, which are warrior monsters that are focused around Link summoning into a soul day, which you're going to see right here, right down from Kamal Crooks. And that has the ability of searching an equip spell as well as adding the warrior, I believe. So we're going to see a brand new take on this Sky Striker deck. And we're going to see exactly how powerful this deck is. By the way, sorry about the last round. Somebody hit the camera and had to like manually hold it. We had one of the guys have to manually hold it, and we were trying to fix it, but uh, we weren't able to fix it at the be uh, during the match. But we were able to fix it a little bit. Unfortunately, don't have the angle that we completely want for this match, but it's something that we'll just have to do for now. Uh, they did end in time, and Michael Bond was the winner. He was able to resolve... A Widow Anchor, I believe. And take control of Patrick's ABC Buster Dragon and just kill him with it. So that was um, that was pretty unfortunate for Patrick getting killed by his own monster. But that's what Branch is going to do. You summon a boss monster, you're going to get it used against you, unfortunately. So, talking to Kamal a little bit before the event, he was uh, really dead set on just playing with this Goki deck. It is very powerful because it does have the ability to just keep pushing forward with a lot of extenders. Plays Goki Rematch, plays Soul Strike, uh, Soul Charge. I'm sorry, uh, Monster Reborn. It has a way, a lot of ways of recurring their creatures. Of course, um, they also search each other. So it's pretty easy to just keep going and keep going. And you're going to see Kamal here try to complete something special. But unfortunately, Ray here with the Effect Veiler for Kamal's Firewall Dragon, which would have been able to get him another way of buying back a creature and completely keep going forward. But it looks like Kamal here stopped by a Timely Effect Veiler. We're going to see exactly what type of board he can come up with now. He does have the ability to recur that Phoenix blade by banishing two warriors from his graveyard and adding it to his hand and go into another nightmare possibly but we're going to see exactly what uh, Kamal decides to do here yeah he's going to special summon the Ibli off the mermaid yeah firewall does extend here so um, arguably a better target for the effect veiler uh, we obviously don't know many of us probably don't know exactly when the best time to interrupt your opponent is when they can continue extending versus when they actually have to just pass their turn and it really just depends on their hand also i mean they could always extend if they have certain cards but boom kamal showing the soul charge 
And that has to be really unfortunate. Yeah. I think Ray scooped it up there. Terrible hand. Axe of Fools with the Takatum Borg. That was crazy. Man. All right, well, didn't really matter there. Sometimes, even if you do try to disrupt on the right extender, even if they have cards like Rematch and Soul Charge sometimes, I feel like it won't matter as much just because they'll have the extender that really plays through the disruptor, if that makes sense. But Assault is a very good target because it stops, it cuts them off from the Phoenix Blade, which the Phoenix Blade can in turn be another card and another card, and then that leads to another card. So we're going to see how both players go into their side deck now. I'm going to see if I can dig up their deck list. All right, guys, so we dug up their list, and surprise not, they're both playing the same 40 cards. Here, it looks like they are playing the main deck Axe of Fools, which is pretty interesting. That card is pretty strong. I mean, one, it's an equip spell card, so that's always good, especially when you're trying to resolve it in a soul day. You want to have one of those in your hand, in your deck. But um, it is a pretty interesting card. Uh, I, let me see the first printing here. It's from Star Strike Blast. So, unfortunately, it does have a lot more reprints, so I don't see it hitting, like, an outrageous amount. But it is something that I wouldn't be surprised if it hit, like, a pretty large amount. But, um, it is an equip. Like I said, it is something that can be used as another target for a soul day. Um... The equipped monster gains a thousand attack, but its effects are negated during each of your standby phases. Inflict five hundred damage to the control of the equipped monster. So, not only can it inflict some burning damage, but it can also give a creature more attack to beat over another one. But it also has the ability of negating the effects of a target card. So. Not too bad of a choice here by both of these individuals main decking that card. Of course, it could be a brick, just like anything else. But, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's a very, I feel like it's a very powerful card. Just having the option to do so is good. And I, I know a lot of them were complaining, like, oh, man, if you draw, the, like, the Phoenix Blade, it's such a brick. Because not only can you now resolve, like, the Assault Day, which they were talking about, um, it's just something that it's just, it, it provides nothing to your game plan, you know? So, oh, Kamal Crook's playing a Terror Top. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, Terror Top is at one. 
So he's playing Terra Top for a Takatumborg, and he's going to make. Could it be an MX Saber Invoker? Are we going back to Zodiac days? Who knows? What format is this? But that's pretty cool. Playing the MX Saber Invoker Speedroid engine. That's something that is reminiscent of the Zodiac days. Those cards were. Well, the Terra Top was at three back in the day. But very good in Gokis just because it does allow you to extend here and go into an MX Saber Invoker, which does let you special summon a Warrior. Earth, level 4, I believe. Level 4 lower, maybe? I think it's just level 4. Yeah, just level 4, I believe. But very good because Gokis, guess what? Surprise, surprise, they are level 4 Earth Warriors. Well, I'm sorry. That's very general. Only one of them, I believe, is a level 4 warrior. Because I know the Scorpio, I think, is like a level 5. I know the majority of them are warriors. But, especially good because you have the Super X. Which is your level 4 there. So, he's going to go and grab that from the deck. And he's going to go ahead and make try to make it a Soul Day. So, essentially, Terra Top here. Very significant because it does essentially make a 1 card a Soul Day. Which is what you want to be doing in Goki's, like, for sure. <laughs> right here, shaking up. <laughs> His OCD kicking in, he had to push in that bear hug. Or, uh, I'm sorry. What's the name of that guy? Who knows? Making a Nightmare Phoenix. Ray just looking at his tokens. Wondering. Wondering if he's going to die here. All right, so Kamal here, extending, extending, extending. We played a Firewall, then a Nightmare Mermaid, which is going to go and discard a Phoenix Blade. Butler Z, is that you, Zach? <laughs> That's funny. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, we're going to see Kamal here. We have some options. I wonder if he's going to complete the whole U. I mean, like, there is some pros and cons to that. It depends if he goes into uh, Trigate. Because he, he can get evenly matched, but if he goes into Trigate, then he's fine. <laughs> Zach, fly yourself over to beautiful Miami, and we can definitely get you in the stream room. But you're not here, sad face.
So we're going to see Goblin here for Kamal. That's going to let him fur further extend. It's going to add a Riscorpio, which is one of the level 5s. But Goblin, notable because it's not only going to let him discard Filter, but he can make an additional Normal Summon. Alright, Kamal making a Cerberus here. It's going to discard to destroy the Ibli. I believe. Add a Goki from the Riscorpio. And it looks like Kamal's going to discard and draw here. Is he? I don't think he's discarded yet. Okay, I think he discarded Ibli. Alright, so Kamal finally making that Trigate, and it looks like we're going to see him complete the U here with the Link Karibo, and he's going to use his last two effect monsters to make another Link next to the Trigate Wizard in order to, in order to have his Trigate Wizard. Wow! He just drew a talking to Borg! <laughs> Holy cow! That had to be the worst anticlimactic draw phase I've ever seen in my life. That was completely terrible. Holy cow. Insane. I, I'm like, I <laughs> uh, drew the terror top. That is so funny. <laughs> I think he's just gonna scoop here. 